what is going on guys welcome back to another video as you can see behind me we've got the all new e63 it's about time we had another amg on the channel basically the plan today is to give you guys a proper detailed sort of video on this we'll do the walk around as usual at the rooftop as well the proper place and then take you for a drive on our usual country roads um if you're new to the channel basically what we do on this channel is give you guys a sort of real world feeling of the car um you can call it a review if you like this one is going to be in a sort of vlog format we're going to get to the sort of details of the car but yeah what we'll do first we'll get on with the walk around and we'll show you guys the sort of spec on it here yeah, and then take it for a drive so let's get started right people so the new e63 amg this is not the s like i've mentioned um it's still a beast though like i'll explain in a second i did drive the other day um yeah it's just stupidly fast even in non-s form uh the main differences between this and the s there are a few but we'll go over the power first uh, the power in this thing is a 4 litre twin turbo V8 like the S as well but in this particular form it's got 563 bhp um, the S has around 604 um, the torque is also different on the S and this the S has around 627 pound feet and this has around 553 I believe uh, it depends how you convert it really but this thing still has a sort of 4-mic system we'll go over the sort of the other differences when we get inside so I'll show you guys the exterior first do you like the way the new e63 looks man it's just totally different to the old one before i wasn't really an e63 guy i was always m5 but this new one has definitely changed up a bit you can definitely notice the flared arches i mean if you go back here the way it sits man proper machine this particular car isn't specced out too much from standard it's got the upgraded alloys um, probably the best option to go for to be honest it also has michelin pilot sport 4s standard proper good tires like i've mentioned in a few of my videos um, it's also blue as you can see it does look quite smart with the sort of black sort of finishes going around the back got the four exhaust pipes as an amg should squared ones as you can see regular e63 if you can even call an e63 regular yeah it does sit quite good it's got this nice sort of balance of um, being sort of executive because of course people who buy this car they're usually like businessmen and um, people who have made it usually it's got that balance of looking classy but also aggressive right so moving on to the interior it's like a spaceship in here to be honest it has got the upgraded bucket seats which are an option but i think if you're going to get an e63 you want these seats man they're properly supportive and also do look pretty good especially when you look at it from the front as well um we'll just jump in here because it's quite windy outside um in terms of trim like i said not too much on this car um it doesn't have like a panoramic roof or anything uh, but it has got a few little bits that are standard anyway i mean for example you get a nice steering wheel on the s you also get suede here or alcantara if you want to say um it has got quite a nice sort of grain finish here doesn't have the upgraded sound system either you can get loads of options on these things it's pretty much you could spec a match like a hundred plus thousand so pretty limitless um in terms of the back of course it's quite nice it's just generally a proper beast of a car to sit in like right now i'm sitting in this car i'm not moving anywhere like a lot of audis i've been in the seats you're sort of moving around these do look quite similar to the seats on the other amgs but they feel a bit more sort of comfortable than from what i can remember um they're not like the a45 seats again i'm confused uh, the a45 seats are a lot harder than these so they have adapted them but yeah generally quite nice guys also the amg logo here as it should be iwc clock um in terms of the infotainment system we'll just put the ignition on here got a nice sort of pattern as well on the uh, start button i'm mostly used to like audis and bmw's their infotainment system so this is all new to me i'll be honest another option this car has head-up display um you can move it around as well when i was driving it the other day i did find it was quite intrusive in the way like i was getting quite distracted by it but apparently you can move that around in terms of options that's all the sort of stuff that this car has had added on from standard head-up display bucket seats and the um, wheels you definitely got to get those wheels man they make all the difference they're the ones you normally see on the edition ones and stuff yeah apart from that it's all just regular e63 in terms of differences to the s there are a few more extras apart from power um one of the main differences is that this doesn't have the drift mode now a lot of people are buying the s because of the fact that it has drift mode uh, which means you can make it pure rear wheel drive uh, that's part of the race mode of this there are so many modes in this thing we're gonna be saying mode about 100 times in this video but yeah that's the main big difference i believe apart from power this you can't make it full two wheel drive now other little bits this car has a mechanically controlled diff as opposed to the electronically controlled one on the s they also have dynamic engine mounts apparently on the um s which make a difference of course and also the other little bits that you've got the brakes are apparently a bit smaller from what i've been told but yeah, apart from that everything's pretty nice in here you definitely can do a lot of miles in this thing what we'll do now though we'll turn the car on um that's another thing i just want to point out before we get to that this car doesn't have the amg performance exhaust either 
but you'd be surprised though because this thing still does gunshots i was really surprised from what i've been told it doesn't have it but you guys can be the judge for yourselves right so i believe the key's in here let's just turn this beast on here's the key nice amg key got the logo there also i believe it's got that a back stamp on the back if that's how you pronounce it see do know my amg terms here and there even though i'm an audi and bmw guy do appreciate a nice merc let's just turn this thing on start button it's in comfort mode so you don't get no pops on this or stop i believe you can do that if you start up in sort of sport mode but yeah we'll do that in a second all right so in terms of modes um, one thing I will say, you know when you sit in here, you can't actually access the sort of modes quite easily. If you look at it from here, you can't see nothing. This is my driving position. You can't actually see the button. So if you come over here, here's quite obviously a big car, so it's quite a wide cabin. Um, that's manual mode only, uh, similar to what the AMGs have been in. Obviously traction off. And also here, I believe, are the drive select modes. Of course, that's an Audi term, but bear with me. You can control the screens from here. It's like a sort of <laughs> Black Bay touchpad, to be honest. But yeah, we'll just focus on the middle one. Right, so modes, comfort sport sport plus so you can hear the sport plus definitely makes a change look if you go to sport now listen <laughs> i don't even know if you guys can hear that but anyway for me i can hear it opening up so it's in sport plus now sport comfort and individual right okay so no race mode as i mentioned only the s has race mode and in race mode you can put into drift mode by holding the paddles and stuff like that but yeah let's just give it some revs in sport plus apparently the key to get the most sort of pops and bangs is to rev it just past five um, then you get the loudest sort of gunshot, but you'll hear it on the outside as well. I'll just show you on the inside first. Head of despair as well. <laughs> you can hear that now. See, this isn't the AMG performance exhaust from what I've been told, but it's just really loud. You can hear it from the outside as well. Right guys, so as you heard, that's the standard AMG exhaust that comes on the E63. Uh, apparently that's not the performance exhaust, but just proper gunshots, so it's crazy. What we'll do now though, we'll finally jump in the car. Right, people, so here we are on the E63. Uh, we've got it in Sport Plus. It's gonna stay in Sport Plus. There's no time for comfort. Um, I did actually have a go in this the other day. So I am so familiar with it, but it was pouring with rain, so. The car was just really sort of tail happy, even though it's four wheel drive. So yeah, normally 63, not the S, formatic as usual. Um, even though people would call this the non-S, it still really takes off. <laughs> you get sucked in. Like I have driven other cars with around 550, 560 horsepower, but this because it's formatic. And just the way the power delivery is, it's got a nine speed gearbox as well. So the ratios are quite so like, you know, they like keep you in the power band. Gunshots as well. Right, so nice little bend here. He's doing the gunshots as well. Standard exhaust. Yeah. <laughs> so the thing is, I haven't actually driven the um, current shape C63. The only AMG that I've driven, sort of modern one, is the A45. This old the C63 that I drove was the old one. This thing, of course, is totally different anyway. It's the new C63, four mic and stuff. So. AMGs, it sounds a bit more like I know other people have said this as well. You know, like how F10s and stuff sound like that, it has this sort of less aggressive tone to it. Um, of course, the gunshots are proper AMG though. This 
isn't the AMG performance exhaust. Like every time it does a bang like that, I'm surprised it's a standard exhaust. This thing's mad. It just sucks you into the seat. So, like I said, it's good to have a bucket seat, trust me. Bridge approaching, the usual bridge that we've gone through. Hopefully no one's coming the other side. The thing squats around. That's what I mean about it being slightly different to the um, other powerful four-wheel drive cars. Of course, when you've got this much power, even four-wheel drive will spin. But it just squats and sort of finds sort of spaces where it can get its power down. It's not just like you can get in there and just floor it wherever you want. You've got to sort of learn the car a bit. Um, so it is different to the other four-wheel drive cars in that regard. Of course, stuff like the uh, drift mode, etc., you only get down the S. Uh, but me, uh, for example, on this drive, it's not really going to matter anyway because I wouldn't be sliding around in these country roads. There's no sort of margin for error. Um, so far, I haven't felt that this car feels slow, but the fact that you can get something even more powerful than this is just crazy. I'm from Mercedes themselves, so this isn't even the best one on sale. <laughs> or it's even designed for this is more like a, a hot hatch road but it's good that it can demolish it if you want to you just got to be wary of the fact that this thing's big I mean the only thing that I found to be an issue so far is the visibility like it's weird I know but I'm seeing in here it feels like I'm locked off from the rest of the world like this A pillar here is massive all right got a guy coming the other way I made some gunshots jeez traction light even flashes on the head-up display as well that's a new one. It just moves around loads. You have to be on your game. Like, for example, the last car that I bought here, um, what was it? That was sort of four-wheel drive and so sort of, yeah, it was the RS3 and also the RS4, the new one. But they don't squat around like this because this has just got like... Basically, hold on. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> the thing is, like in terms of comparison, like most of the cars I've driven are hard hatches or smaller saloons or estates. Um, the closest I've driven to this power is probably the, um, well, in terms of type of car, because I've driven cars with this power. But the closest I'd say is M6 Grand Coupe, but that's totally different. That is similar, of course, to the F10. But um, I haven't driven an RS6. That would have been good. Something's beeping at us. Like I said, I haven't driven the RS6. I am due to drive an RS7 soon, but those cars are of the sort of previous generation now. These new cars are totally different. The F90 will be good when that comes out, but yeah, proper car, man. I revved that quite a bit, actually. I forgot about the last thousand RPM. I was revving up to six. It happily goes to seven. It's definitely got a bit of a sort of synthesized noise though. It sounds a bit like, you know, when you sort of ring out an F10, like a stock F10 or an M6. It's got that sort of weird computerized noise. Jeez. Yeah, it's tail happy, man. It's tail happy. It's just hard to imagine how you can go, how you can improve from this. I know there's a little bit like the sound, there is that. I mean, does the gunshots, like I've said, probably about 10 times by now, but. For example, engine noise could be a bit louder, but um, yeah, apart from that, it's a proper accomplished car. Uh, the ride is also not bad, but the thing is we are on a sort of smooth country road. There are a few undulations. Um, in terms of body control, it is good. It gives you confidence, that's what I like, even though I'm used to like smaller hot hatches. Yeah, just look at the way it's transitioned. Car, every RS car, I'll be honest, even though I'm an Audi guy as well, um, they're not hard to drive. 
to drive quickly yeah of course you're gonna know what you're doing but they're not gonna suddenly spin out whereas this I feel like it would See why they probably are bigger on the nest. Jeez. <laughs> I couldn't actually hold my head for <laughs> the last thousand RPM has still got a lot of bite to it. Um, I keep feeling like short shifting this though. It's weird because it's got so much torque for around 550 pound feet. I'm just thinking with the 627 and the um, S must be crazy, man. And also, when they tune these things, it's gonna be crazy as well. <laughs> Uh, crazy and mad are probably the words of this video, but there's not really much to explain in E63. I know it's quite a positive review so far, but there's a reason why this whole media is loving this car. It's not all just like hot air. I'm not even like a full AMG guy, only sort of recently I've been getting to sort of, I sort of checked out a few AMGs and sort of thinking, yeah, they're pretty nice. But you know, when this came out, I saw the photos, it's a proper car. I haven't actually driven the new C63, so hopefully soon I get to try one of those. It'd be pretty cool. Um, I want to try an S as well because it has some nice little extra features. So yeah, that would be pretty good. Um, like I said, if you guys have got a car that you want to feature on the channel, your own car, I'm down as well. So just drop me an email. But yeah, I think guys, so far, um, yeah, it's been pretty good. I think what we'll do now, we'll just wrap up the video. <laughs> Right people, so that was the E63. I thought we'll end the video here. It is getting quite dark and these country roads don't have any street lights, so my GoPros are kind of having a hard time. I uh, hope you guys had a good feel of the car. That's the all new E63 MG, like I said, non-S. Hopefully you'll get to try an S eventually. Um, also guys, if you got a car you want to feature on the channel, your own car, definitely send me an email and let's set something up. Um, what well, I'm thinking though, let's try some more AMGs. So if you guys are going to AMGs, definitely let me know. And of course, any other cars, you could check my um, videos on my channel. I do anything, to be honest. It's not just German cars. But yeah, anyway, guys, if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for plenty more videos to come. And I'll see you in the next one.